Hey all. So this Ron, I've got this five gallon here. It's uh, maybe five and a half gallons. One of those Petco deals, and I've got uh, four of them. There's three more down there. The one in front looks really gungy. I've been trying to raise uh, brine shrimp in it after after they come out of the hatchery. That's not working very well. Uh, so I got to get that sorted out. Get this tank cleaned up and try again. Um, you know, never give up, never give in, right? Figure out what I'm doing wrong and try and do it right. Middle tank, there's nobody in it right now. In the back tank, uh, these are all those little five and a halfs from Petco. Uh, there are red cherry shrimp in here. And it looks like there's some bladder snails that found their way in here too. And it also looks like I gotta turn the air up just a hair. Um, but anyway, what I'm gonna do with this tank here, this tank sat empty for a while. And then a, a friend came over and gave me some of these uh, um, wild caught mollies that he caught out of the Colorado River. There's a big male. This is a really aggressive little turd. You just, he just got an attitude. And then uh, some uh, mutt type guppies is what he called them. And they're in there somewhere. There they are. And then in the house, I've got uh, some least keelyfish that are doing very well also. So anyway, then I've got this tank, back to this tank. So they were all in this tank and I had a blueberry cheesecake that, that uh, what was it, like a marble blue koi placat betta that died a couple months back, not long after um, I got them to spawn with Penelope von Schweetz. Uh, so it sat empty, I cleaned it out really good. I use that 10%, whatever it is, the spray bleach you know, countertop cleaner and then rinse it out really well after that. Make sure it was well disinfected. And then uh, I was watching uh, an MD fish tanks and he built this blue, you know, this tank for these blue Acara and put these, uh, what do they call it, Echinodorus, uh, Am swords, Amazon swords. Uh, and these little short petioles, for those of you that don't know, the petiole is not the stem, right? Petiole is the part that holds the leaf itself onto the to the stem of a plant. In this case, the stem is like this basal crown. Um, and they looked a lot like this, and I don't know if they're the same or not. They've got this more of a an oval or an ovate leaf uh, instead of the the typical big Amazon swords with this uh, uh, spearhead shaped leaf. All right, so back here I'm making you all seasick. Uh, just one of the services I offer. Uh, anyway, so I thought I'd get these. I, I looked for them, and I'm not sure if they're the same ones or not. These are called Echinodorus uh, Red Flame, and I really like the look. Um, and uh, they must have been grown submerged because I put them in, floated them in this tank uh, when I got them a week, week and a half ago now. And... Uh, then I thought, well, I need to put somebody in here because everything I do with nothing in it ends up with mosquito larvae. And my wife's not a fan of having mosquitoes in the garage because they end up in the house. So I dropped five of these little orange platies that came out of this tank. And I got a bunch of them. Um, so I'm gonna have to find homes for these guys. Uh, but anyway, so what I'm gonna do is take this tank apart and I'm not going to escape it per se. I'm just going to have some fun with it. Uh, take the plants out of the pots. Uh, put the fish in a bucket of this water. This water came out of this tank. I should have taken it out of this tank, but whatever. Uh, so it's, it's healthy, you know, and it was fully, uh, fully seasoned with all beneficial bacteria coming out of an established tank. And I dropped it in, uh, dropped them all in this tank. And then the fish to... Uh, hopefully to control skeeters if they show up. And uh, um, so what I'm gonna do is put some, probably a little bit of fluval stratum on the bottom and then some sand on top of that and then plant these things in it. I'll take them out of the pots and plant them. Um, and they'll, they'll be kind of deep because it's a shallow tank, it'll look really deep. So maybe I'll slope it up towards the back or whatever. And just, there's five of them in here. Uh, that's all they had left, so I took all five. Um, and I've dealt with this vendor before and I like this vendor. So I'm gonna plant these in here and it's just a holding tank for these, uh, these swords. 
uh, that's all it's going to be. So uh, I'm going to get started on it. I've got to go wash some sand. And I'm just going to use regular old, uh, uh, you know, home center builder sand. Or, no, it's not builder sand. It's play sand. I'll use some of that. Um, and then uh, the fluval stratum. And maybe throw some gravel on top to hold stuff down. These guys aren't diggers. But uh, we'll do that. And then uh, once I get the sand washed, I will put this thing on a tripod and let you guys help. All right, so it turns out I am out of sand. I found this bag of unicorn vomit. And I thought, well, I'll just use that up in here because what the heck, eh? And I got the plants out. I'm going to take those apart. Uh, right now i got to go get a fork because they've got that uh, rock wool wrapped around them. Not my favorite, but it works. All right, so here we are. And I learned the fork technique a long time ago watching MD Fish Tanks, because that's what he used. And I'm using an old fork. I don't know if he was or not, so I don't know if his wife appreciated that or not. Red, uh, red Flame Sword, Echinodorus Red Flame. So pulling the rock wheel off. Rock wool, I don't know what I just said. Um, try not to do too much root damage. Not a fan of this stuff. I guess I could let it dry out and throw it in the attic. There's all kinds of it up there. So there's a the nice root zone. Yeah. And this is the time if you got any damaged leaves, you can just pull those off. I'm not a fan of cutting them off because then it leaves the little base of the petiole. I said that before. This is the petiole, part that holds the leaf onto the crown of the plant. The crown of the plant on these is right here. So a little more horticulture for you. These are monocots. And you can always tell the way the, the leaves just rip down the veins. So we'll throw that in that pile, throw it in that pile. I always save these. Uh, they're good for something. Now one of the things I use them for is to uh, um, hang plants in, put a piece of wire on it, hang them on the back of, a, back of the tanks for a place to suspend the little potted plants. Works well. So another tag. They're well rooted. These came really well rooted. I think they're $8.95 a piece. There's a vendor on Amazon that I bought plants from before. And then it was, I think that's what, maybe they were $6.95 a piece. And it was $8.95 to ship the whole lot, which is nice, instead of, you know, $8.95 per plant, which some people think is the right thing to do. I think these guys, if it'll fit in a box for nine bucks, that's what they do. Um, and I really like that. So when the fork tends to comb it out. And another nice thing about monocots, they have just this long fibrous root system. So you're not really tearing a root mass apart like you would with a dicot plant. This is a point where I could actually separate off a couple crowns off of this one because it's really there's one right here off this side the big one in the center there's another one that's forming a small one right here I don't know if you can see that by my thumb and another one on this side so it's, I could separate this into four plants or so um, if they separate easily they just snap away and there's one that's got a really nice root zone of its own. So that's six I have then. Um, these big leaves, I'm just gonna pull off on that little side shoot here. They don't really need to be there. 
And there's a piece of a petiole, get rid of that. And we'll just leave, I think we'll leave all these for now. And maybe when I dig this pot or this tank up for these swords for another tank, I'll be able to separate this then. They grow pretty fast. Alrighty. So that is that. All right, so the water's out. The fish are out. The tank is empty. Not absolutely dry, but that's okay. So I'm gonna start with the fluval stratum. that's enough maybe just another handful right there where I can see the glass because it bothers me and it's probably bothering one of you guys too and then hello there the unicorn vomit pile this stuff in, make it deep enough, it's almost all of it, um, I got this stuff when I bought a 40 gallon breeder that was used, it was this partial bag, and I'm not a fan, but what the heck, it, it came with the tank, and instead of just throwing it away, I thought it'll, and since I didn't have any sand, it'll work here. So I got just a little bit left in here. Let's see if I can get it all out. Oop, all over the garage floor. So let's start. This is tight quarters. So what I'm going to do is just anchor these in here. And then I think what I'll do is come back and insert some little quarter pieces of root tabs under each one. That should help. This one's got big long roots. I'm just going to shorten those. And I'm running these right down both sides. And I'll leave kind of like a little channel up the middle. Like I said, this isn't about aquascaping. This is really just a plant holding tank more than anything. And the platies are in here for mosquito control. Because that is important here. I don't want to... Yeah, the, the platies, most of the fish here... Uh, will eat the mosquito larvae that hatch out in the tank, so I'm not worried about them developing into adult mosquitoes. Um, but, there's no point in just letting them have their way. And where did they go? API root tabs. And if I bust these into quarters as best as possible. And a pair of tweezers, pincers, whatever you want to call them. And put them right down underneath the crown. And there's a 
the fluval uh, stratum underneath that, which I didn't realize, but I guess it's a, a clay. Clays tend to be nutrient rich. And some do anyway. Some bind up nutrients. Nutrients. Front view. All right, so there's still about almost half the length of this little tank space in the front. So I've got a whole bunch of this, uh, I think it's called Sagittaria, that's growing in the front here. And it came out of another tank. So I might take some more of that and just kind of try and get it going, like maybe eventually carpet the front of this tank. I really like that stuff. We'll see how that goes. So now let's put the water back, put the fish back, and uh, clean up my mess. So here's the handful of Sagittaria that I pulled out of another tank. I just thinned out a few. I think I got five here maybe. They spread by a runner. Um, it's probably a rhizome. Could be a stolen. I'm not sure. Um, but I, I'm just going to wad the roots up. Let me push the cart back out of the way. I was going to put the fish in first, but I thought it'd be easier to put these in first. Um, so I'll just bunch the in fact, here's one of the runners here that was going across the surface of the other tank, the uh, surface of the substrate. And that's why it's green. Where they're buried, they're white. Okay. So we'll just... And these won't take long. They establish really quickly. And then they will start sending out runners and carpeting uh, this whole front end of the tank. And I don't know if I will have gotten to uh, taking this tank apart yet or not. I might, might not. We'll see. But Sometimes it's just easier to plant like this than it is to try and shove stuff into substrate with the, the tweezers. Um, I thought I counted today. Yeah, I guess five. I think I counted six. Um, bits of detritus moss, so I will offset these two. And there's another runner here. A lot of light right here, sorry about that. Using my phone, one of these days I'll get a real camera that shoots video. I've got a really nice Canon 40D or a 60D, but it doesn't shoot video. It's older. So one of these days I'll just get another. And there we go. There's uh, five of those in there. And those two little leftover bits of uh, API root tabs, I'm just going to shove them kind of in between this whole mess. That should be fine. Just one right about there and they'll search it out and one right about there and they're in there so now these are ready to go so now I can start filling again and I probably should put something down there to uh, catch the water so it doesn't slosh it all up This is a Talanti uh, ice cream thingy. So I've got kind of an ice cream addiction going. So let's see if we can just pour it in there. Get it started. And I'm dripping all over the floor. I'm in the garage. It's a concrete floor, fortunately. It will dry up quickly, so I'm not too concerned about it. Probably should be, because it's also getting all over the, the bottom rack, which there's a sheet of plywood on that. So if it wicks back under the tank that's down below and all over the metal, uh, the metal framework of these shelves and get a little rust and rot going. 
but I guess that's probably part of the joys of fish keeping. I mean, I'm not sure if had I do it to do it over again if I'd have built wood shelves. Um, and certainly I don't think I would have done wood shelves on top of uh, concrete blocks because this is earthquake country. And uh, I don't really want that. I think I'm hoping these metal shelves are a lot more stable. Oh, first fish. There we go. So for now, I'm just putting the same water back. It's fully seasoned. In fact, there's fish poop in it. So afterwards, I will give it a check for uh, um, ammonia and nitrites. And there's plants in here, they'll suck up the nitrates. Um, there's all four fish. I don't know if you guys can see those in here. There they are, the platies. I don't want to dump them out on the garage floor. That would be really stupid. So I'll dump those straight into the... There they go. And that's one bucket down. I use these little two-gallon paint buckets. They work really well. It's going to be a real dark tank with the, that black and multicolored unicorn vomit. I would have liked to have... Uh, had the lighter sand in it, but, you know, I completely forgot I used the last of it up, and to be honest with you, I'm not even sure where, but these are cool little tanks for um, nano fish, you know, five and a half gallons, you could put a dozen neon tetras in here with plants, a little sponge filter, Maybe, you know, uh, some, some really cool rocks and a piece of driftwood. It'd be a really cool little nano, nano tank for a desktop or whatever. And I think it might also require a new male beta, beta, whatever you like, beta. Oh, that's getting too full. I'm just going to pour this in here. And the rest of it goes back here. There. So that's it. Let me get this out of here. So there's no heater on this tank. Um, and there's this piece of pothos that's been dangling here, and it's going to eventually find its way, just the weight of the end of it will find its way down into the tank. So it'll start to root. And that certainly helps with uh, nitrate control. We'll wipe it up a little bit. And the fish are all terrified. And hiding in the back. Let me take this off the tripod. It's going to shake a little bit. And let's take a look. So there, what do you think? It's not too bad, not for a plant holding tank. It's better than just the empty glass box, I think, with these things floating around in the containers, which was perfectly serviceable. But these will propagate just by division. As they grow, they'll get bigger. Uh, and this uh, Sagittaria will also just propagate by runners, and eventually it'll fill the whole front end of this tank and start working its way backwards, depending on how long this thing stays here. And it may just, I may just leave it for a while, put a beta in here, and uh, if I need more of this... Uh, Echinodorus red flame, you know, maybe then by then that vendor will have more and I will get more. So that'll work. Kind of fun. So anyway, uh, let me know what you think. Good idea, bad idea, you know, how, how it goes, right? Questions, comments, smart ass remarks. I'm open to them all. All right, you guys, it's Friday here in uh, sunny Palm Desert, California. I hope you all have, have a great weekend wherever you are. Take care.